Hello, this is Dirty Twenty Gaming. My name is Kevin, and we're a couple minutes late, which just shows you that it's us. Uh, these wonderful people have agreed to join me tonight to play this game with me, and this game's getting intense, so let's talk to the intense people who play the intense game, starting with Bison underscore Stonefist. That's me. Um, I play Sid Brimlock today. He's our engineer. He is the no-bullshit mustachioed bastard. Um, uh, other than that, I'm pretty much here. This is what I do here. Um, I Tuesdays, I run our Cyberpunk Red game, um, Carnage Heights. On Thursdays, I play Encino, the Dragonborn Paladin, on our D&D 5e game, King's Pirate, which is a Fool's Gold campaign by Dingo Doodles. On Monday, soon, coming back to it, I will be playing Jack, not a cop, Aldridge, in our Buffy the Vampire Slayer game, uh, Graven World. I almost said Dead to Rights. It's the second time I've done that. <laughs> that's this one. Dead to Rights is this one. Uh, yes, that's Saturday. <sighs> okay, uh, let us move along then uh, to the mighty and the wondrous Wayward Knigget. Sorry, I pronounced it phonetically. Yeah, wayward Knight. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, that's me. I'm Wayward Knight, um, aka Chris. I uh, exist on this here uh channel and in our discord community probably somewhere in chat uh right now and um i play felicity caldwell in this here game tonight <laughs> i also run the buffy the vampire slayer campaign grave new world that we do on mondays coming back at you on the 25th of this month for season two um I'm an artist. I put things on the internet, and they're for sale if you like them. And I also host a podcast called Professional Questers, where I interview people about their TTRPG characters, and then I flip the script and interview the characters themselves. You can find all of my stuff right there. On the tree of linkage. Thank you. Uh, and there's no surprise left, so I just wait till she till they finish coughing. Uh, <laughs> Karis, hello. Hello. What are your many and wondrous things that you do? Oh, well, uh, lately I do this and I do Minecraft streaming, and that's about all I'm able to get done. <laughs> oh, I feel that deeply. <laughs> yep. Uh, the grind is real. It is, and it's hideous. Uh, no, but, it's not. Yeah. It's wonderful. And all the little blocks. Oh, the, the grindy bit the... is nasty. The, the gaming is great fun. It's just the energy loss in between. Is it's meditative. <laughs> I can sit there and chop trees or dig oh. stone for hours. Oh, I can't do that. That's another one of those games I can't play. But anyway, don't get me off on my tangents. <laughs> Let's play this game. Uh, <laughs> last time, the four of you... Uh, had a dinner party. Kinda. I mean, it was a big fancy table and lots of people and servings and pudding and all the things. We, we reminded the lady Caldwell how the blue collar eats. <laughs> yeah, uh, great first impression. <laughs> we want pudding. Uh, I did my best. But there was at the yeah, end of the Yeah, you're day, not the one to blame. <laughs> And uh, at the end of it, uh, Allegra, Allegra did a sneaky, not so sneaky, and uh, did their group bonding, melding, healing thing that they do and made everybody feel better before they went to bed that night. And I believe that's where we went off, whatever, where we left with everybody going to the bed in the evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except so, we did all help stack dishes. Yes, that's right. You, uh, the people you at the table yes. also help stack dishes. Oh yes, there, there, there were the staff. there were many socially uh, socially strange things occurring for sure, especially by the local standards. But we're going to start the next morning. You uh, wake up to find uh, out in the hallway on a table. There's a a note uh, held in place under a glitter covered rock, so you know who it's from. It says, "Gone to find my." And there's a long pause, and somehow they write the word in a way that makes it smell bad. Protégé. And have a word. Art. The have a word part almost goes through the paper. <laughs> I believe that word's going to rhyme Press with mileage. So hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
I wonder what color she'll come back. Words. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what color she'll come back. Red words red. always <laughs> end up with that. Is it paint? Is it blood? Who knows? <laughs> A little bit of both. So, glitter. The uh, three of you wake up in the private chambre of a Lady Felicity Caldwell and associated rooms. Um, who's up first? Sid. It's usually Sid, yeah. Crack old it habit, on. Old, har- old habits die hard. Yep. Tea with the ghosts. Yep. So you're up making your tea and looking out of the window, and it's a spectacular view of the city from up here, it must be said. Uh, it, it's a nice view from where the rich people live. Uh, and you've got like we uh, we mentioned, you got one of those little balconies, those little yeah. tiny ones. It's like just big enough for two people to stand on. Smoking so balcony. Yeah, um, luckily for you, the ghosts don't need to stand on anything, so they can just stand outside and with you uh, <laughs> as you're looking out over the city. Uh, anything you're looking for? Anything but putting together your plans in the morning? What are Sid's thoughts? He's kind of just <clears throat> excuse me. He's kind of primarily watching the city wake up Mm -hmm. see what areas start moving first um trying to identify the location of the coach works by okay what happens he's just he's 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 observing i mean um florence was a very very sleepy city yeah i mean everybody was spread out so kind of just woke up in fits and starts yeah it's not like that here (laughs) <laughs> this is especially from up here you can see it you're not the first one up first of all by the time you get up there's already signs of of moving about in the city but it's all out on the periphery mm-hmm. it's all the poor people like the, the fires start up the breakfast fires start up and then it's like watching a circular sunrise people wake up getting closer and closer and closer to the center of the city so first okay. there's the laborers, then the bakers, then the deliverers, then the, you know, the people that work at the palace, then the neck, you know. Yeah. It it's yeah. The people that are doing the hardest work live the farthest away and they start the first. And they start early, early, early in the morning. As far as the coach works go, um <clears throat> there's n- I mean, there's some large buildings, but they're clearly defined as to what they are. You don't see a building, and you've got a view of the whole city from up here, that's yeah. big enough to put a coach works in. That isn't clearly marked as like a flower manufacturing plant. Or... Yeah. Yeah, like he's he's obviously like looking for plumes of steam as yep. opposed to plumes of smoke. and Almost none. There's little puffs here and there. Like people mm. have got like a steam engine in the backyard, but that's that's it. He he looks at Tomas as he's sipping his tea. Oh, looks like I've got my work cut out for me. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Tomas was his foreman, yep. his uh right hand. Yep. And uh they're Thomas and there's a couple of others from the factory there as well, or the, you know, the steamworks. And they're all looking out with that same look on their face, the same one you've got. It's, 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 Mm. you're fighting hard not to go peasants. You know, you haven't got any steam power at all. You know, you're so far behind. Yeah. It's like, I thought Venice was supposed to be good. Mm -hmm. Like it's, He's not disappointed, mm-hmm. but he is unpleasantly surprised. Fair. I will leave you unpleasantly surprised on your balcony. Uh, who would be next? Allegra or Felicity, do you think, would wake up next? Um, <clears throat> Allegra waking up has... Wakes up um kind of slowly and kind of stiff and isn't really moving very much and as she sits up and and you know ponders the prior night she didn't sleep very well Mm -hmm. um and didn't do her usual tuning last night didn't right 
you know, didn't do any of that. And so, I mean, for all that it was a really, you know, nice evening and, you know, social and, and talking. And like was kind of wondering what she's doing here. Fair. It, it's, you know, a little bit, I say, I mean, you know, coming into Venice, you know, she realized she had a place in this. And despite what she did for the the evening meal last night, she discounts that entirely, of course. Sure. This is Allegro we're talking about. <laughs> and, but, you know, having listened to the incredible story and the incredible journeys and the, the hardships and the things that they've gone through and, and you know, the, and how they've pulled together and how they use that with each other, you know, they each other role in that. And it's like, She's back to feeling kind of out of place. Fair enough. As and so she spends her yeah, so she spends her time kind of thinking through that, moving, you know, moving so she does, you know, get up, she does sort of get herself dressed and as she's moving kind of awkwardly and all, but but yeah. so she's emotion moving emotionally slowly as well as physically slowly. Fair. A a note gets slid under your door, just professionally fumped under your door. Um, what, so I managed to sit down on a chair and I kind of look over at it. What uh -huh. can I tell sitting from a distance yes. uh, <laughs> without it's, going uh, over to it? What oh, can yeah. I see? Yeah. Um, you can see that it's on, um, it's on the house stationery. So it's on uh, Caldwell, uh, stationery. Um, it's, uh, just simply folded in half. It's not wax sealed so it's not from yeah. you know it's it's something written and stuck under your door locally i look at it i sigh well if it were really urgent they would have tapped on the door mm -hmm. so therefore it's not urgent yeah and it can wait a minute absolutely and that's a good moment as you sip your tea <laughs> is uh, a moment where we're going to flip over on don't write and talk at the same time kevin you're not skilled enough uh we're going to skip over to felicity you went to the room that was built for you right at the end of the night yeah so you have gone there and uh, that's where you wake up uh with that uh the pendant that was made for you and the yeah. um this room that was built for you but i mean it's beautiful but you maybe you didn't notice last night because it was so busy but it's built for a child kind of like, yeah, i was waiting for that yeah it's not like a, it's not like frozen in time when you were six it's a pretty it, pink princess room. it looks well what it looks like is it's been updated over time mm -hmm. up until about by the looks of it somewhere around late teens is when somebody stopped updating it um felicity went to bed crying mm -hmm. and i think she cried through a lot of the night yep so she is rather hungover from that. Yep. Um, and um, so she, regardless of how early she wants to get up, yep. she sleeps in quite late. Because, uh, yeah she just doesn't like doesn't have an alarm clock or anything so uh -huh. um i i it's probably like late morning when she finally wakes up mm -hmm. um and she's looking around and she's noticing all of this like 
um all of this like you know the updating stuff that you said and it all just like kind of hits her again and her eyes well up again and she has to like quickly wipe the tears away or she'll just like break again mm -hmm. um so I think she, you know, sits up and um, tries to compose herself as much as she can and um, I think I think something that she hasn't seen in a long time in this room is a mirror mm -hmm. and um she gets a look at herself for the first time in how long has it been like a month two months yes yep. <laughs> and you're no longer had you guys none of you have had access to the medicine that was and the treatments that was keeping you all looking much younger in Florence. So, yeah. yeah. Plus, you've been on the so road she, for a month. You're beat up. You're bruised. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. She looks rough. Like she, you know, more wrinkles, more sunspots, uh, flushing from, you know, being out in the sun um you know healing bruises sort of i think the one thing she would have been able to maintain more than other things would have been her hair yep. um but it's still a little bit ratty you know split ends and all that um the last time and... we had a good like day's rest with like the amenities was i think the fair or lemville no it was the village yeah, well, that's, that's yeah. i'm thinking like modern amenities like hotel style amenities as opposed to oh, yeah. oh. that was the trough of warm water so yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 um so and like she fell asleep in her clothes because that's all she has and her clothes are like a her clothes are still oh wait no i think she got new clothes at the village so yeah. they're um they're all right um but they're clearly becoming tattered and dirty mm -hmm. and yeah. it's like no wonder she was getting even harder stares than mm -hmm. she oh, yeah. you know sort yeah. of would have warranted otherwise um this you know pauper looking ass girl claiming she's yep. the daughter of one of the most prestigious families in the uh -huh. whole city yep. um <laughs> if it wasn't for the fact that she was like the spitting image of her mom um so like I think the first place she heads is the bathroom for what she hopes would be a bathtub that she can uh, take a bath in. Oh yeah. Yeah. All all the amenities plus. Uh as you head in towards the bathroom, you hear that knock enter thing that servants do, the the dunk and the door opens and they come in. And you see uh, two of them come in. One of them goes to the windows and throws open the curtains and starts, you know, puffing pillows that don't need to be puffed. And the other one goes over to a small table and sets down a, a breakfast. Uh, well, you presume it's a breakfast that's under a big silver cloche uh, and then busies themselves making the bed. They say nothing to you. Don't even make eye contact. Nothing. Yeah, she's too tired. She's just going to run a bath for herself yep perfect everybody's avoiding something let's stop that uh <laughs> sid <laughs> let's go back around the circle here uh sid it's 
anybody that knows anything about people that work hard is they start early. So mm -hmm. if this coach works is out there, what's the plan once you've had tea with the ghosts? Um, well, the plan is to like Felicity take a friggin' shower. Yep. Um, he doesn't really have any spare clothes left, but he does have his nice, um, his nice apron. There is a house livery in the closet. He will grab the plainest ass shirt and slacks combo he can mm -hmm. find. Yeah. So it's ju um, just the house colors. You're not wearing the tabard. Just the, yeah, no, like, no it's, just it's, the blue and white or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. He's like looking at the fact that these have sleeves. Yep. <laughs> he's trying not, he's trying not to make a comment about the sleeves. A little tighter on the biceps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Now I got this image of sitting in he... a tuxedo shirt with the sleeves ripped off. <laughs> the Hulk Hogan special. Yeah. Um. The he. Um. Yeah. After his his shower, he you know shaves you know finally gets the the cue ball back because he's been missing that for a oh, long yeah. time you yep. know takes an you know a gentleman's amount of time on the mustache so it looks good <laughs> you know all the spare all the stray hairs have been clipped uh -huh. um yeah you, and then he gets ready he um i think he gets ready too early there isn't yep. enough movement yep Exactly. In that wing. Yeah. That there's not can... even anybody to tell that you're doing anything. But so that means yeah. you you would be the first one that sees Artemis's note. Yeah. In the hallway as well. So he he reads the note. Smirks. I feel sorry for them. Puts the note back down. Kind of like sets it aside so people aren't like walking into it and stuff. Yeah. Um and then he knocks on Stefano's room, knocks on the door. And you hear, no, 10 minutes, mom. You better be ready before I'm ready to go. Oh, shit, I hate being paid. Oh. And, he <laughs> rolls, <laughs> rolls out of bed. and then it's it's Stefano. So like 30 seconds later, he, he thinks ready is pants on, right? So... Yeah. He answers the door, hair still up here, face all smushed from the pillow. He's got his pants on and he's pulling on his shirt. He's, where where are we going? Where is there coffee there? Well, you still have a little bit of time, but yeah, we're going to try and find this coach works and make a good impression. Oh, we better take Verite. He'll kill us if we go to a coach works and don't take him. Well, I figured he'd already be up, but he sleeps a surprising amount of time. Never would have guessed. Watch this, though. And he opens the door, and like there's that you can see Verite in his bed over there. And mm -hmm. he just walks over and pokes him at the bottom of the foot. And Verite just sits up and says, Hello, what are we doing? Like a bloody switch. Um, we're looking to see what Venice has to offer in terms of technology and what we can give them. Almost none and almost everything. I'm in. Let's go. That was not an idea. Yeah. And Stefano's got this look on his face that he's trying not to hate him. Yeah. Like he's just um, trying. He's Stefano's still half his face is like it hasn't woken up yet. <laughs> time zones. <laughs> yeah. It's coming. It's coming. He'll be able yeah, by the time you get um, outside. But yeah. Sid walks into the bathroom, walks back out with a comb. <laughs> it's like you're going to have to do something about that. You're taller than I am with um, it. That's just weird. Does this thing flattens yeah. his hair down like a kid, Burr. and one of them comes back up? Yeah. The comb. It it would be best, preferably before breakfast. <laughs> there it is. Can we have pudding for breakfast? Probably not, eh? Probably not. Okay, I had There's lunch porridge, last night. I'm sure. Porridge is kind of like pudding with lumps in. Yeah, and a lot thicker. <laughs> <laughs> and you, the three of you, uh, as you get to, um, I mean, you're technically in the staff area, 
mm-hmm. uh, for uh, Lady Felicity, but you're still staff. You're up. You're upstairs staff. So your so your food is waiting for you. It's not fancy. Yeah. It's not under a cloche. Uh, but there's plates, uh, there's a couple bowls of porridge and like a stack of pancakes and some yeah. syrup and butter. Sid has a... Well, cake and milk is a wonderful breakfast if you want a mid-morning sn- snooze. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, sugar for breakfast is fun. Good night. <laughs> Great. That's my yeah. hypoglycemic ass. Uh, sorry, back to the story. Yeah, um, yeah, now Sid, he has a fairly Spartan breakfast, you know, the toast and marmalade, the yeah. usual. Um, not so much waiting for Stefano and Verite as knowing that they're going to be very important for what we're about to do. Yep. Yeah, Verite so has precisely it. one muffin and exactly one cup of tea. Uh, Stefano eats till he's awake. If you can see him because he's about halfway through a muffin and suddenly... Blueberries. Swaffs down the rest of his big mug of coffee. Okay, um, it's as good as I get. Let's go. <laughs> Before we go, let the ladies know where we're heading. He heads back upstairs, knocks on Allegra's door. Enter. You Almost open, steps on the piece of paper, uh, goes woof across the floor when he opens the door, yeah. creates the draft, and kind of blows it across the floor a little bit. And Allegra is sitting on a, a chair. I mean, a, a sitting on a chair and, and looking somewhat pained. Mm-hmm. Allegra, you are right. I will be. Is there anything I can do to help? Oh, not really. Oh, I suppose you could hand me that whatever that note is that was delivered oh. to me earlier. Right. I would save me having to get up for it. Yeah. Bends over, hands it to her. Yeah. I'll take it and set, sort of set yeah. it aside. I won't look at it. Okay. Yet. Still not going to look at it. Okay. Me and oh, the boys. Because I'm are listening he- to. I'm listening Absolutely. To yeah. Yep. Yeah. Me and the boys are heading into town. See what use I can be. This place. Do you want me to get you anything while we're out? Or would you like to come with? Um. I can't think of anything that I would want. Um, Coming with... Actually, can you wait a few minutes? I'm moving kind of slowly this morning. You don't have to. Go ahead. No, no, no. Take all the time you need. Okay. I'll, I'll... I'm moving. Another pair of eyes on Stefano will be appreciated at any rate. You could have slipped ah. in. <laughs> He's starting to regret getting up early now. <laughs> already. That's something that I can do. All right, give. I'll be there in a couple of minutes. Give me. Okay. Closes the door, the door behind him and uh, knocks on Felicity's door. Uh, you said after he left Allegra, you opened the note? Yes. It says, there are, and in quotation marks, friends here to see you at the inner gate, which is the gate from the city to the rich people part of town. Okay. I will put that in my pocket. Okay. <laughs> And then Sid, you go and uh, well, you, you, <laughs> Stefano's borderline aggravated now because Felicity said you slept till noon, uh, and then you had a bath, so you cannot possibly be knocking on her door before like one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> so, no, no, he's knocking. He's knocking on the door, but considering she's still passed out. Okay, that works better. Yeah. 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 Um, well, actually, as you approach the door, uh, a servant standing outside the door. And you can see they're, it's, it's a trick they used to use. They're actually standing backed against the door with their mm-hmm. head resting against the door. And you can pretty much hear what's going on inside a room if you do that. 
Yeah. So as you approach, they, she's not awake. Very well. Um, let her know that we are heading into the city. We may be back by noon. I'm not sure. We'll, uh, we'll do so, of course. So yeah. As you come back, Allegra's moving on. She's moving very slowly and awkwardly on her crutches. Okay. I think Sid would give her a helping hand down. Yeah. If, if she Sid, takes it. what do you what do you make of this? And she'll pull the note out of her pocket and hand it to him. Someone put that under my door this morning. That's the note you handed me. Friends, in quotation marks, that could be. Did the nans uh, follow us? Uh, would they use friends in quotation marks? I I'm mean, the only sure. ones I could think of like that would be like the guards, the the, the guards from Fortley. But I can't. Why on earth would they? A. How would they know I'm here? And B. Why on earth would they? It's quite the trip. We should know. Yeah, I. I can't see them have chased us that far. They didn't even seem to want to cross the bridge. No. I... <sighs> I suppose if we happen to go by there, you know, I can look and see what I recognize. <laughs> well, we'll have to head to the gate anyways to get to the, to get to the city proper, so... Oh, well, then that will be convenient. I'll take mm -hmm. the note and put it back in my pocket. Yeah. Well, that um, will work fine then. I, I mean, yeah. who on earth would be interested in? Uh, I. Perfect. I want to get the two of you to the gate. Then we're going to cut back to Felicity. Uh, but I just can't resist. Uh, you're so close. Um, as you make your way at a um, at an Allegrin pace. That's that, that's <laughs> that thing where you you move at the pace of the person who is setting the pace, and in this case, it's Allegra. Uh, so yes, uh, which works out fine because it, it's it's very very close to a stately pace. Uh, <laughs> so, Except the stately pace would be graceful, and this is very yes, awkward. This is it. it's, it's, it's close, but uh, <laughs> the right speed. I mean, it's the right speed, but it just it looks awkward. But you get to that the inner gate, uh, and uh, as they see you coming. There's still a raised eyebrow because neither one of you is wearing a tabard, but news travels fast in this city, uh, and they they give you the uh, the upstairs staff bow mm -hmm. and pull the gates open unquestioningly. Beyond it, there's a group standing in the middle of the road as though they don't know what else to do, and like people are going around them, and 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 getting and filling out paperwork and doing all the thing. Um, are some people that are also in uniforms. Blue and gold in particular uniforms. They're really ratty and tatty and a, a little bit burned in one instance. Small amount of fire burned somewhere, sort of an epaulette over here. <laughs> they look utterly lost. Lemvillians. Yes. Yeah. Um... Okay, well, I recognize them, those. And they recognize you. It's Me? like, yes, it's like an amoeba. Like they move what did I do in Lemville? <laughs> they kind of change shape. and, and Lemville kind of... was before Forley, wasn't it? No, because Lemville was when the boys were doing the 1812 overture. The fair, yeah. It, it no, no, started right, with that, right, and, right. We, and we timed it with the cannons, yeah. and I they pumped magic the into it. And yeah, this was after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, Lemville was Thank after that. God, I the fair was right story. before Forley. I'm getting yeah. our disaster <laughs> towns mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they, they swarm towards you in particular. They are all holding branches with leaves on them. Oh, bloody it's hell. like, wouldn't they be going after Ar Artemis? Artemis did all that beautiful artwork. All I did was time the cannons or time Verity's music to the cannons that Felicity was doing anyway. Um, and you hear phrases. It's very, very Monty Python following Brian out into the desert because it's she is here. She is here. We have told her we have followed you. We have followed you. Your art brought us here. Oh bloody hell! That's not wasn't me. Um, 
It was I, you or Sheen, the two of you, and two more. They've clearly mistaken uh, you for okay. Artemis, but they've got uh, the story right. But yeah. uh, So these are you? your... I don't suppose I could hand these off to Artemis. Could I? Um, wear yours? <laughs> one, of the, one of the guards says, so they're your friends then, are they? In a sense, we know them. What and we I'm looking you? around, and I'm starting to pick up the vibes around. Yes, they are ours. Excellent, our staff has arrived. Nice. Um, do I need a play for that? I don't think I do. I think your sheer status as staff of Caldwell is enough. If... Sid was drinking anything at that point, it would be all over. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Tea lips everywhere. Uh, but yes, um, at the at that sentence, it's like you flipped a switch. They stop being an amoeba. They form into three lines of four. They're standing at attention. They're they're working. They know how to do this. They've got their little branches held beside them. And they're just quivering because they find that their dream has come true. They have traipsed across the great nowhere and have overcome many difficulties to follow the vine. And the vine has led them to work, which they know. <laughs> Palmer, I wish Robin was here for this. <laughs> They, they were and this would go very differently if over, this was over in the, the guy was with us. <laughs> over the table, this was never Robin. This this was always going to happen. This was this confusion was always but going to be part of the party. Regardless, yeah, yeah. regardless, I wish she yeah. was here for this because her reaction would be, oh my god. No, she, yeah, she, yeah. She's yeah. off to deal with her. Yeah, she, she's yeah, after it, what it, she it, thinks is her problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, her protege. Or apparently her uh, prophet. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Sid kind of looks to she's Allegra. She's not the messiah. She's a very naughty girl. <laughs> <laughs> but she knows how to put people to work. Yes. So, uh, Sid, where do we need them? Um, we don't have a place yet, do we? Don't. <sighs> I don't suppose um, Terrence is with us. I don't think you're right. Probably, no. Didn't bring him with us. No. Oh dear, I abandoned Terrence. There are um, uh, there are a dozen of them, and without a word being said, six of them move in front of you, and six of them form up behind you as though they're carrying the palanquins, uh, yeah, and they yeah. wait for you to start moving. They've even got their hands held like they're holding a palanquin. Silly, but they would probably play well in Venice, actually. Oh, yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just personally. Like, oh, somebody's me. keeping up appearances. Don't you know? Don't. Yeah. Look. We've all oh. had those days. All the, all the only thing that's going through Sid's head is that this was not what we had in mind when we set you free. <laughs> um, um, you have to do more than set them free. You have to show them yeah. what free means. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so the first thing to do is going to be... Uh, Sid was heading to the Cappuccino Coach Works. Um, he's actually going to ask one of the guards where it's located. Do we have? Uh, is it, I need a writing utensile, please. It's not looking at the guards who the wrote guards, the note to me. Absolutely, yeah. They they make yeah. They got paper and uh, notes. And, well, because uh, they well the, the, actually yeah. they sent a messenger up, but yeah. I I am going to write a note to Terrence. Okay. Um, these people are going to need productive tasks. Get them set up with temporary housing and order and show them how to go about getting food supplies, whatever. And I'll have tasks for them soon. Okay. And I shall give it uh so i'll give it to the lambs i said you know i i kind of look at one of the guards yeah um 
<laughs> if Sid was writing the note, we appear to have inherited an entourage. Help. <laughs> okay. I need I'm you to really go. I'm looking up forward and to Sid I'm... trying to figure out how to be a noble. This is going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. No, he's going to make the nobility like him. He doesn't have to become like him. <laughs> um. Okay, so I'll, I'll give them directions for how to get to the Caldwell house. I say, when you are at the gate, ask for Terrence. Don't ask to enter. Ask for Terrence yep. and give him this note, and he will instruct you on what to do next. Yep. Thanks. They're, okay. they're just they're so happy to have instructions. The one at the front on the right-hand side takes your your note rolled up like a scroll and holds it like a torch. And they move off in that six and six formation, so they're carrying an, of empty, fire plays. an invisible in slow empty motion. palanquin, and they're dum, 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 dum. the guy at the front, dum, dum, dum. and they head up the hill to <laughs> House Caldwell. I catch a glance with one of the guards. What are they? How are the guards reacting to this? It's the biggest dickest scene. They're just <laughs> they're biting and choking it back. But the weird part is the locals are looking away, noticeably and obviously not seeing the issue. Sid, you asked one of the guards where uh, Cappuccino Coach Works is. Mm. And he looks at you and he says, I know the answer to this, but you're not from here. Right? Why does that matter? Because it's Coachworks Cappuccino. He looks at the plaque. It says Cappuccino Coachworks, yeah. Uh, you, know, you guys have the car? Sure. That makes sense. Yeah, you wouldn't have walked all the way down here. So, yeah. <laughs> he looks down at the... And he looks at the car and you just... Boat. And he gives you directions on how to get down. It's right down by the, it's down in the part of Venice that's actually on the lagoon. So it's like uh, gondola time if you want to get there. Yeah. All right. Hey, shitty bang bang convertible. <laughs> yeah. Just, just <laughs> one boat for each wheel. <laughs> All four guys singing different, <laughs> different uh, songs is like all the way songs. down. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna we're gonna send you on your way to. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to Coachworks Cappuccino, and we are going to cut back because by this time, um, Felicity, you are clean and smelling of bath balms and and unguents and ointments and bleh. and colognes and and shampoos and washes and stuff that it like she. <laughs> She had nice stuff in Florence, but like this is a weird level of nice. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um uh yes, a whole bunch of words that sound nasty but aren't. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, mm, yeah, that captures it. <laughs> um so yeah, she like she smells super duper fancy, but she doesn't feel super duper fancy. Yep. Um she goes to like find something to put on um oh i've been waiting for you to come out of the bathroom for minutes <laughs> there's there's a um we told we we told uh vaguely as you went in there you saw them bringing in breakfast under the cloche and then fitting mm -hmm. with the curtains and all that stuff when you come back out breakfast is still under the cloche windows are all open it's been turned into a day room beds made couches like the Cushions have been moved off the couch to make it a nice meeting area. Uh, there's uh, fresh flowers on the table sitting in the sunlight going, ah, like they do. Uh, oh, we're dying. Ah, you cut us off. Ah, why? Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> it's absolutely stunning in here. And yet it's hard to look at any of it because there is a row of five dresses on mannequins set in the sunlight. Mannequins? And a tailor, stat, clearly a tailor. They've got the 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 the, 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 the measuring the pins and the yeah. measuring tape and the yeah. standing all but at attention beside the. I mean, they're each one of them is like a designer day gown, different colors, different patterns, different shapes, different 
textures. Uh, there's also another uh, smaller uh, person standing behind. They kind of peek out from behind the uh, the tailor and say, uh, perhaps we can do uh, hair, makeup, and nails before we decide on the dress? Kosevi, like, has to physically keep herself from, like, gawking. Um, <laughs> you're going to say running straight out of the door. <laughs> <laughs> I, I presume that you wore the only clean thing that was in there, which is a huge puffy robe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She Like, she wouldn't have gone out there naked. Or, or, um, or in your dirty old clothes, was my thought, yeah. Or in my, so. or, yeah, or in her dirty old clothes. Um, so, yeah, she, she grabbed the ridiculously opulent robe yep. um and basically is pre so she's presented with these dresses and yep. hair and makeup yep and nails they said nails too no, oh god and nails um yeah she i she wants to she wants to show her mother that she cleans up nicely yeah. um, and wants to sort of bridge that gap. So mm -hmm. she will, she's not going to call it playing the game because she's not going to like, you know, concede her beliefs in order to appease her mother for a yep. time. Mm -hmm. But See, mom, I can she, look pretty too. That, but that's still a really nice dress, and yeah, <laughs> and a haircut. I could use a haircut. It's still, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like she want if she has to become the face of political mm -hmm. change, she has to look like the face of political change. And I did say they're all different colors and shades. What I should have said is they're all the same colors but different shades because they're all house colors. Which I think okay. we kind of I blurted out earlier. I think is blue and white. That's what Sid yeah. found for clothes. So yeah, that, which makes sense that you've got blue and gold servants because that's snooty when your servants are covered in gold and you're not. That that that's like super <laughs> snooty. But uh, Felicity. So yes, uh, they start uh, with your permission. They start. They just take the dead ends off the hair, and then you recognize there's coiffing going on. They're not just giving you a haircut. They are they are preparing and curling and stacking up and putting pins in and, and creating artistic works upon your headspace. And at the same time, the person doing your nails, they do that thing where without saying a word, they judge you. They grab your hand and look at, and they grab the nippers and have to cut them all off real short because they're beat up and like you've been fixing cars and building stuff and yeah. And they're cleaning underneath them, and even after your bath, you know, there's it's a lot of work uh, to make you uh, ho haute couture presentable. They're painting your face, and yeah, it's oh, uh, it's that scene in Mulan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. god! <laughs> and, then, and then just out of reach beyond them, there's that beautiful silver cloche with all the food on it. Right next to it, there's a cup of tea that you can see is no longer steaming because it's starting to lose its heat. Oh. Uh -huh. I think Felicity's stomach growls a little bit, but like not enough for anyone else to notice. <laughs> oh, they'll notice. There's no oh, yeah, level say... of low. There, yeah. there, there's no subtlety you can do that they won't notice. No, yeah. the servant um, rolls the tray over towards you, lifts the cloche to reveal uh, three different crepes because they didn't know what you'd like. So there's sort of a, oh. a green green onions in one and there's one that's got a fair amount of cheese on it because you might be american and uh, there's a third one that's got sort of onions and and a little spicier and then this the, the cup um, of tea yeah if there's um if there's one that's like i think there's one that's like um like strawberries and brie oh yeah yeah, a good breakfast one. There's that's the cheesy one. Then there you go. You add we'll put strawberries and brie. Yeah. <laughs> Pan you're so Canadian. <laughs> I know that does that's not a Canadian word, it's Dutch, but we have the Dutch here, especially in the valley that he and I both live in. And yeah, they're famous for their pan kuchen. They're amazing. They're like but you have to eat house. 30 of them because they're only this big. They're only that yeah. big. So <laughs> it's like paper. Um anyway. 
yeah so she, i guess she'll select her crepe yeah. um use your and, and so the the makeup person starts doing like leaves that part untouched mm -hmm. right so the you're blast, still so. eating yeah they're, they're they haven't done yeah uh, makeup and you know or the lipstick and and uh you know chin highlights and all that yet mm -hmm. they went after your um mouth. okay so so she'll hold herself back from scarfing it down yep. um and eat in a dignified manner and then um uh and then let the makeup artist resume yeah um uh, and i think they've angled her in such a way that she can't see herself yet yep yep so um she while she's getting done up i yep. guess um she's staring at these dress options and she's like it's so hard to decide other than like one that she's like no yep. um <laughs> and as, again as soon as it it's it's gonna be creepy but as soon as your eyes drift over there the tailor and the rest of them just gone out of the room it's just you and the tailor your makeup is done, your hair is all of that's done. They've grabbed their stuff and they're gone. <laughs> Which one looks <laughs> most like a black? Um I think I think the one she goes for is sophisticated but simple. Mm -hmm. Um maybe like the the complex the complexities in the pattern of the fabric and the weaving as opposed to the intricacy of the design elements and oh, stuff yes. like that it's not frilly it's not frivolous it's kind of reminiscent of like almost like a riding outfit um, if you combined like a Victorian day dress and an Edwardian day, or not Edwardian, yeah. elegant um, rather than fancy, yeah. yeah, yeah, like a um a Regency day dress and an Edwardian day dress, if you kind of mushed them together, less of the frills and lace of the Edwardian, more of this, but like kind of the silhouette of the Edwardian with the sort of simplicity of the Regency. Mm -hmm. Nice. If my costume history ass knowledge <laughs> yes, gets yes. applied, yes, um, right around see, the turn. I told you it was going to be useless. Um, <laughs> but as, they know they didn't, but it ended up it ended up being uh, a skill that I tucked away. Yes. <laughs> uh, so once you choose the uh, the tailor is just nodding along with your choices and it's an, ex an excellent choice, madam. Uh, and he reaches into a small bag next to him and pulls out this voluminous sort of lacy, fluffy, it's kind of got legs on it, it's kind of got arms on it. And he's, your undergarment, madam. And he turn, he hands it to you and turns your back, turns his back. It's like almost petticoat levels of complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think... I think she takes it into the bathroom. Yep. This is why I uh, this is why I did this. I wanted to know where you went. Yeah. Um and tries to decipher the various yep. layers. Um because it's like I'm imagining like bloomers and then the sort of under underskirt um petticoat and yeah. then there's the um not like a really restrictive corset but like the um yeah. sort of stays in such a way that like it supports and contains yeah. and um creates that shape that you that they like yeah. and then over that there's the chemise and then there's also like it's a whole the, it's the, a whole thing. The trick is, once you get the stays, that that piece with the stays in place, you realize 
you can't tighten and tie it yourself. You are covered in, in all the possible ways possible. Uh, but at this point, you require assistance. F. Yeah, F. <laughs> this is actually um, designed that way, so. Mm -hmm. Some of them were, some of them were not. And but you um, hear outside the... That's outside my um the actually door. moment. Yes. <laughs> Front-loading bloomers. Outside the, uh, outside the door, you hear a very quiet... <clears throat> when Madam is ready. jaw just kind of clenches a little bit and then she relaxes mm -hmm. and she's she's dressed enough she guesses um and goes back out and it's like okay as you open the door and step out he his eyes get wide and he says uh, madam it is customary to open the door a short amount and back up to the space and he's very carefully looking you in the eyes, even though you are very clearly covered. He was expecting you to open the bathroom door this much and then back up to the space and let him tie it up. She just turns around. <laughs> very good, madam. Madam makes the rules. And he... <clears throat> and tightens it all up as tight as it's supposed to be. And then madam can handle the chemise and backs away again. Yes, I can handle the chemise. Um, and she goes back in, closes the door, yeah. and puts the chemise on. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's one more sort of translucent, fluffy little layer on top of other fluffy little layers, but somehow you're dressed. So when yeah. you open the door and walk back out, it's not the same. He is now uh, making sure that everything's, you know, that you got everything right. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that all, all the places are in all the places and all the things that are supposed to be tight are tight. Uh, and then he heads over to the uh, dresses. By the time you come back out, the other four are gone. There's just the one left. Uh, and as he's sort of undoing the snap, the little tiny, the tiny, tiny rows of buttons on the back of that one to get it prepared for you, he says, uh, shall we go with a similar theme for, uh, for dinner, madam? And then perhaps a bit more um, of a train for later on? Oh. So, yes. Um, do how many times am I expected to change? And there's just a little hint of of snark in it. Uh, if Madam continues to skip mornings, then only three times. That part's not inaccurate <laughs> for, some, for some levels of society. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting here thinking um, four, so. Yeah. Morning, day, dinner, and evening, yes. Yep. Okay. I imagine something similar with perhaps a bit more um elegance. And he grins and says, Yes, madam, a bit more precisely. It is expected to be cloudy this afternoon. We'll be making our own light. Ah, uh, okay. And you could see the depths. This is this is just your tailor. And they've got access to fifteen to twenty dresses a day. They know the weather. They're like a sommelier of clothing, right? They're just, this is all mm -hmm. they do. So, but that means the clothes are actually going to be comfortable to wear. Oh, yes. And you do see yes. them uh, make a couple of notes on their palm as they're fitting you. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so she she will stand through the fitting and stuff and kind of, you know, work her way back into that mental space of she is where she needs to be and she's doing what she needs to be doing and 
she can do this she has to do this and this is her reality now um she's going to change this town she's going to do it her way but she's going to show them that their way doesn't have to completely die so he just gets needs to... some attitude adjustment yes so as he gets you finished up and um and does the last few adjustments and you prepare to leave he says um they are expecting madam uh in in the reading room Madam, he says, uh, and, and in capital letters, like, Mom, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, awaits. Well, thank you for informing me. And she's just finally adopted that air again. Um, she's sufficiently awake now and accepting of how this is going to be. For now, <laughs> you catch a glimpse of yourself um, in the mirror on the way to the door. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it looks like somebody else. The sunburns covered up by makeup, the clothes fit. Uh, they you know, they're you look like you're going to a grand ball and it's one o'clock in the afternoon. You can almost it's, smell your it's... other clothes in the bathroom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure it's, they've been uh, removed. They've, oh, yes. They've, yes since, they've, so. they've been cleaned. And a bit of an identity crisis. Burned. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's the intent of this that's, whole scene. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, Regency um, area biohazard suits. So, yeah. Basically, so, so, Felicity, I want to I wanna paint this because you said that. I, I want to paint this option. You realize that if right now you walk down that hall, and walk into that reading room and sit down beside mother and read that the rest of your day is going to be every bit as prescribed, every bit as limited, and every bit as restrictive as that. They're trying to make you fit. I think when she finally sees herself she has that realization and he likes being fancy but she doesn't like being restricted mm -hmm. um and this like she likes the dress but it still it definitely feels like a costume Mm -hmm. Um, I think what she does is once she gets out of her room. Um, actually, no. She will dismiss the tailor mm -hmm. so that she is by herself. And she will take a cloth from the bathroom and sort of lessen the amount of makeup that yep. is caked on her face. Yep. Um, just to like Make it make it look a little more natural yep. than like than like Marie Antoinette. Yeah, and um, speaking of Marie Antoinette, that's what the hair above this kind of it's that, well, that yeah. beehive yeah. thing going no. on. Yeah, all Regency. <laughs> she yeah. um, that is not Regency, but yeah. um, <laughs> my bad. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're in my wheelhouse. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We distracted um, you. Sorry. <laughs> When you know stuff, that you're is, allowed to have is, actual is. moments. You're allowed. That's that's part of the best part about knowing stuff. <laughs> French psychology. Anyway, um, 18th century France. Um, I 
Yeah, she is going to start pulling out pins and yep. rearranging curls mm -hmm. and basically like because they they curled her hair, right? Yep. But instead of instead of it being all pinned up, she lets it flow down. Yep. And she just braids the two sides and kind of like waterfall braids. Nice. Cuz yeah. she she knows how to braid. Yeah. Um and so it's it's very pretty it's yeah. very elegant but it's very freely flowing yeah. and she will um let's see based on what i have pictured in my head um i think i think she tries her best to like make her sleeves a little more practical yep. by like tucking them very kind of like all tricky like cleverly that's the word yes. kind of cleverly into themselves to like make it elbow length instead of yep. uh oh. to the wrist get rid of all the um, gets in the way of everything yeah and, yeah, yeah um because you got stuff to do she, <laughs> yeah. yeah and she will um she will pin up the um pin up her skirts so that they just float above the floor as opposed to touching the floor yeah. so she doesn't have to worry about stepping on them necessarily unless she's like going yeah. up the stairs okay. um, mm -hmm. um yeah. and i think she sees the like weird heels they want her to wear and she's like no so um she finds like a more sensible pair of slippers or something yep. There's, um yeah, i was just gonna say there would, there would be uh, the equivalent of a smoking jacket slippers right they're kind of red and black and fuzzy not no, those nobody kind nobody of can see them because they're underneath the dress but yeah. like wearing sneakers dress up a little bit they can no, yeah. it's like wearing sneakers under your prom dress uh, i i get it like combat yeah, boots, like nice, like nice flats yeah yeah nice yeah. flats mm -hmm. um so basically just making her outfit more practical and um and while maintaining that you're still very clearly family caldwell yes yes so like i'm just you know not trying to look like the black sheep but like it's definitely like it's just a um, little rebellion just like a little bit just a, a little rebellion. bit yeah just yeah. a little bit uh, but yes as you step out of your room um you do get the sort of the raised eyebrows um just from staff in general just because your your basically your hair and makeup is not done and yet you look great right so mm -hmm. as you sort of make your way down my question uh two twofold question the first part is are you going to the reading room I'm only going to the reading room because that's where my mom is and I have to uh talk to her okay all right and uh the second question was well we'll ask after that because the second question is where are you going next uh but <laughs> as you walk down the hall what you don't see behind you but the camera pans back uh one of the uh the fallout one of the female staff uh like they they're in as you walk past the staff's job is to back against the wall and kind of stand there still and disappear right after you walk past one of the female staff sort of looks and reaches up and just undoes her ponytail and just shakes her hair down onto her shoulders and then goes back to standing by the wall grinning a little bit <laughs> I want to do the reading room thing, but I want to cut to these two first. Uh, so yeah, go ahead. Go let's ahead. go back to uh, the two of you are together, but Sid specifically, you were headed for uh, Coach Works Cappuccino. What I'm expecting to, what used to be a prestigious Steamworks is most likely now a coffee shop. Uh, it's it's nice. yeah. You have to. I'm assuming you guys get in gondolas, uh, get in a gondola mm -hmm. and go. 
Yeah. Because uh, you know. yeah, other than that, it's going to be swimming. Yeah. So you yeah, unlock the car. Um, so no when you when you vehicle. pull up in front, you can see this is one of those places that had a tiny steam pff, coming out of the roof. Like mm. Is it a steam engine? Maybe. Uh, and you can see this place was never a coach works. It's a little tiny, uh, tiny little storefront. It's probably always been a coffee house. It's got that sort of steamed windows and the, the shelves inside with nothing on them. Cause what the hell do you put on shelves in a coffee shop? But the shop was built with windows, shelves and windows. So whatever. And it just, you can smell, I mean, you're English, so you like tea, but um, you can smell that thick, heavy cappuccino espresso smell uh, of that dark, dark roasted coffee and the steamed milk and all of that. Stefano would be slowly floating along. Oh yeah, just like just the Looney Tunes, yeah. 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 Sid's gonna look at this place. I was afraid this was going to happen. And as he does that, um the ghost of Ted and the ghost of Sid's dad. Yeah. Ted sort of slides. Sid's dad, something. Yeah, five bucks. It, yeah, puts it in his pocket. <laughs> yeah. Sid, you went uh, at the end of that. You look up and you see the sign for mm. Coachworks Cappuccino. It's a plaque in the shape of the car that was there before you guys took it apart. And that's the sign, and it says Coach Cappuccino Coachworks on it. Sorry, in my head, I'm thinking it was Cappuccino, Cappuccino Coachworks. They just cut the sign in half. I almost did that, just... but no, I like this better. This this is they made this after they got here. Uh, it goes well with the story that's inside this building. I suppose it's time to find out why. He helps Allegra down, you know, extends his hand and does the gentlemanly thing. Stephanie, Stefano's already at the door waiting. Yeah. God, God, God. All right. All and right. I'm going to look between, sort of between Sid and Verite. And because this is clearly not what they were expect, well, expecting, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't know the the whole, you were not there for the mansion. So this is all new to but you. But the surprise and at all for them, it's yeah. kind of like, okay, I'm yeah. watching and taking Sid, mental notes. Sid was hoping to walk into a room full of his peers. Not a coffee shop they go to after work. Well, Sid, you, um, <laughs> Stefano opens the doors as you approach, and we're going to have you walk in first, uh, or at least look in first. It's a coffee shop, uh, not a big one. There's three or four little round tables and those stupid tall stools with no backs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's like four more of those stools along a little tiny bench up at the front that's got a till on it. So you'd have to kind of put your coffee beside the till. There's not even a real <laughs> shelf space. And then there is, it looks like the Blue Man Group uh, tube thumpy thing, <laughs> but only sort of a meter by a meter by a meter. It's It looks like the Borg made out of steam cube, like steam pipes. <laughs> and there's all these fittings and it's part of its brass and part of its bronze and part of its silver and... You hear Verite was, before you get. I was going to say, say, how quickly word. does Verite move up to fix it? <laughs> no, you see Verite look at it, and you hear him say, "Holy fuck!" And he's just staring at it. I was From going for that data, like data staring. It's yeah. moment. It's like, yeah, he is From a, dumbstruck. From a, yeah, from a professional standpoint, what does this look like? Um. It makes coffee. That's clear enough. There's coffee coming out of one of the pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's steam coming out of a surprising number of places. There's valves and bellows and pressure chambers and cooling chambers and what looks like a still attached to part of it. You can see like it's turning the coffee into steam and then distilling it. Repercolating. It's, yeah, it's like the ultimate percolation. Yeah. Yeah. But you also see that with each order, there's there's a row of people. This is and now my head's gone to the soup Nazi in uh, in Seinfeld with the <laughs> Seinfeld with the people lined up out the door. Yeah. Every order, the machine does something different. 
with every different kind of coffee. Like you order a cappuccino, it goes, dit, 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 dit. you order an espresso, it goes dit, 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 in a different pattern. Allegra is humming slightly, and I'm trying to sync with the mood of Sid, Stefano, and Verite, because I want to yep. know, what is their emotional reaction to this thing? If it's, if it's negative with a tinge of disgust, I'm going to break it. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I'm going to do them in reverse order, because uh, Verite is the easiest to read and the most obvious. Verite is... You, it takes you a while to see to recognize the emotion because it's not there very often. He's confused. <laughs> he doesn't understand. It's you can see it. He's too. It's too complex. He would have made it simpler, but he doesn't get this, and he's trying to figure it out from over here. Um, Stefano, flat out envy, written on his face in big green letters. I wish I'd made that. I don't understand it but I wish I made it. And Sid, I'll let, your, I'll let Sid tell you what Sid's face says. Um, Sid is, honestly, he's watching the orders. Is It's a mess. It's They're definitely purpose-built for the drink itself. Yep. How is the craftsmanship? That's the thing. Oh, he's the machine? To. Yeah. It's like, is it is it garbage? Spotless. Is it like, you know, did the best with what I had? It's like it's spotless. Sound? It looks like um, at first glance, it looks like a hodgepodge of bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. But when you start really looking at it, maybe it's the verite uh, exposure to verite. You start to see why they use various metals in various places because they shrink and swell at the different temperatures. And that's his that's experience a, coming in. That's yeah, a that's heat a exchanger thing. there. And mm -hmm. but why is the heat exchanging from coffee to coffee? Like it doesn't make sense, but you understand it and it's brilliant. And as you look around, you see Verite and he's actually muttering to himself and then he shakes his head and it's like he can't get the whole machine in his head at the same time. He um he said like taps Verite on the shoulders like it's a whole bunch of different machines all mixed together each one does a different thing it is but it's, it's all one, one machine. machine it's all it's one not machine all too. one machine no watch it's all one machine it uses different parts different ways and does different things with it it's like a body bloody hell no Sid sort of does the the foreman voice excuse me who made this and at that moment as at that moment where Verite said it's like a body, uh, Stefano says, I knew I'd seen it somewhere. And he's reminded, he looks at Verite, he says, that, that's, that's the level, we used to do stuff like that inside of, and he looks around and realizes what he's about to say, and in Florence. Back home. Yeah. So maybe we should have waited for Felicity. But you, yeah, then you say, who yeah. built that? Who made this? And this face comes out from behind the cap. Like, it's like they're part of it almost. It's sort of head just sort of comes around the side of it and looks at you. And you can see they're just covered in sweat from all the steam. And the, and the cappuccino machines are hot. This one has no shield over it, no venting. Plus, they're making just coffee after coffee after coffee after coffee after coffee. And as you get closer, you can hear some of the orders have alcohol in them. So it's like an Irish coffee and a different part of the machine goes to good, 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 good. You can smell the alcohol, the, the, the rye in it as they hand it to somebody. It's, yeah, it's that level of complication. And this little face comes out from the side and says, um, my dad did. What can I get you folks? Um, a moment of your time, if you have it. Oh, those are free. And they step out from behind and, and they got a like a, a, a wipe on their hands with a clean towel. And you can see mm. the hands are just shriveled like you've been in a bath for too long. They're just all Sid wrinkled would, up. Yeah. Sid would recognize all of that. Yep. He probably, you know, looks to his own hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's got about five Which years. is when you realize, Sid, it's been over a month. The calluses are gone. I mean, the bruised oh, ribs. Entirely different calluses. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. He's, you don't have, uh, you realize you can feel the heat coming off of this thing, which is not something you mm -hmm. never felt when you worked in the steamworks, right? 
This is a work of art. Sid Brimlock. Steam oh. engineer. Hi. Um, they call me Tony. Same as my dad. Hmm. Is Tony Sr. around? No, he retired years ago. Hmm. In fact, he built this and then gave me the company and retired. Him and Mom live almost up on the hill. Oh, really? And you know that almost up on the hill is like, that's as high as you can go without being one of the families. Mm hmm. Yeah, he kind of gathered that. Um, I was like, well, to be honest, I'm looking to start up a steamworks here. I used to run one back where I used to live. And now that we're here, I'm finding myself short of work. Steamworks, you mean like a bigger coffee machine? Boilers, electricity, the whole gamut. I plan on powering this city. You sound like my dad used to sound. He grins. I really want to meet him. Is yes. this all that's left of the coachworks? Oh, Cappuccino Coachworks? Is that what you mean? That's what brought us here. That's what brought me here. Oh, um, it's gone. My granddad had a cappuccino shop. Mm -hmm. And then my dad, he taught him everything he knows. And my dad buggered off and went somewhere. And he came back like four months later and he won't talk about it. But he's never built anything since. Except this. He points at the coffee machine. Sid thinks long and hard. Imagine, it actually doesn't take him what that John long. Saw at the mansion. Yeah, no, he, he thinks for a second and he's like, hmm. Well, I would definitely want to have a talk to him then. Um, do you know if there's any like warehouse space in the area steamworks take a lot of space um i mean if one of the families is doing it they'll just knock stuff down and build you a building but i'll have to draft up a composition you'd be beholden and everything but you know 25 years isn't really that long i'm not beholden to anyone oh well then you're not going to get a building We'll see. Um, Tony, it certainly was a pleasure meeting you. Your equipment is amazing. Did did you make this addition here? It looks newer. I, he looks at the part that you're looking at. Says, um, I just barely know how to clean this thing. How long have you been working it? Six years. You know more than how to clean it. And he says that with a smirk. No, I'm not allowed to touch it. When it goes bad, I call dad. Anyone who works with a machine for that long knows more about it than just how to make it look good. Well, I mean, when the spouts jam, I can do that stuff, but... Well, it's a good start. My dad anyway. and all his buddies would probably help you with that, though. His buddies? Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. Oh. Do they have a hangout where they gather? Yeah, the, the model train place. Trains? Kind of a odd question. And there's a kind of a... They get flushed, like a, a, and it's they've not been hit with steam. It's embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Um, my dad plays with trains a lot. That is so cool. I know, right? And it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like the flush is gone. Yeah. I grew up in that place. You never seen it. You think this is cool. You should see. He does stuff this big that runs all by itself. And Veritas. You know what? Veritas does stuff like that, too. 
Oh. Right, this guy's talking. You're uh-huh. talking, to, and Verite's right here, looking in the side of his eye. Where is it? Where is it? Where do they live? Where can we? Can we go there now? Can I have that? Smells really good. Can I have a coffee? Do you have pudding? Can we go now? And the guy, um, one at a time. He says, "Sorry, I do that a lot." And he sort of backs up and looks at Stefano. Stefano says, "How about we start with the coffee?" <laughs> And he steps back into his comfort zone behind the machine and says, what'll it be? And Stefano orders a coffee by pointing at bits of the machine. I want to see this, and I want to see that, and I want to see this, and I want to see that. You sure? Yep. And they hand him this cup of sort of yellowy liquid with a real thin milk foam on top, almost like a meringue. And he says, what, that, what, what is it? Uh, that's what my dad called lemon meringue fly. It's about 40% alcohol by volume. Explains why Stefano's fly. wanted it. Stefano was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stefano was like, oh. Imagine lemon gin, but warm <laughs> with a crust. <laughs> Man, that's a... Oh. But it shows you the like what this machine is capable of. The machine's from Callahan's Cross Time Saloon, if anybody hasn't figured it out. A machine <laughs> that can make any drink, as long as you really, really need it. <laughs> Verite yeah, says... Sid watches just, the whole thing. It's just absolutely incredible. Verite says, just, just an espresso. And he watches, like, it's... Like, you just, you watch his focus just go... <laughs> As he watches, it's the simplest process this machine does. And he's just, you can see the equations running up behind his head as he's figuring out how that part works. And they hand him a little coffee and he, I don't even really like coffee. And he just goes back to looking at the works. Like he's figured out this bit. Now he's trying to figure out what it's connected to. What should I order, Verite? You can have this, and he just hands you the, the espresso. No, I mean, in that, what should I order? And he still fails to get it. He says, what do you like? I like almonds. Sid sneakily takes the uh, <laughs> espresso. The, the espresso, yeah. Uh, and from behind the machine, you hear, almond latte? Without the coffee. Almond steamed milk. Oh, uh, and then you hear a bunch of buttons getting like pss, 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 this vents are changed and stuff is moving. That's a tough one. How did it be? Oh, I know, I know, I know. And, pss, 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 pss. <laughs> and you realize that they may not know how this thing works, but they know how. But this they're thing. well, they're borderline magical with their ability to get it to do what they want. Mm-hmm. He knows a lot more about it than he thinks he does. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's all ingrained. He doesn't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like Allegra. He doesn't know. Yeah. He, he dismisses it completely. Yeah. No, they, all, they don't yeah. know how they do it. They just do it. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys have um, the math lady gift. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's so you've got your coffees now. And uh, so, yeah, it sounds like you kind of want to talk to my dad about stuff i want to see the trains and they give you directions the the train place is not up by the fence uh it's not up by the fancy place in fact it's kind of out in the sticks a little bit and if you think about it it has to be because they're not Mm -hmm. supposed to be inside the train club has not committed 25 years for the right to run the train club, right? They're sneaking. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so is that where you're going to head? Um, or you're still here at, at the coach works. Go back and get Felicity. Yeah. I was actually thinking of grabbing Felicity and then maybe. Sid's up in the air on whether it would be too forward to visit them at their home mm-hmm. or the train place too... is their hangout. Yeah, it's their hangout. It's the boys' club. Yep. I would, he, Sid was actually half, half hoping Tony would point them to a bar. <laughs> Bars are easy. 
Bar diplomacy is simple. Buy around. You will find this place easy. Sid will. Oh, Verity and Stefano will. Verity and Allegra Stefano can find will. anything. You're easy. probably never going to get those two to leave, but never mind. All right. You got a babysitter now if you need it. Let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> the fancy place. <laughs> So uh, while you're still here, actually, as you look around, I wanted to do one more thing. Uh, on the wall, there's a photograph. Uh, it's about, oops, I have to recorrect that one thing I said earlier. I said six years, but he'd been here. That's actually hmm. six. No, that's t after the fall, but 16. Let's go with 16 years ago, not six. Uh, because uh, there is a picture on the wall, an old, uh, uh, they've rediscovered daguerreotype for this because that's the color palette I want. Fancy gilt frame. And inside it, there's a picture of the, the car as he mm. built it with all the fancy gilt paneling and shit on it. Uh, he's standing there with his arm around, uh, well, it's a man that looks nothing like Tony here. He looks a lot more like Sid. He's sort of, big he's worked for a living he's got the burns and the scorch marks of somebody who works with fire and and steam but he's got his best best suit on and his best little hat and he's got his arm around his best little wife who's got her best little dress on and they're standing in front of the car with big grins on their faces and behind them you can see the garage and then behind that the mansion sid's parents or is that? No, this is um, sorry, Tony. Tony and his wife oh. at the mansion. Okay. Tony Senior. Yeah, Tony Senior and okay. his wife at the mansion with the car that he designed. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Sid elbows Stefano and points to the photo. You recognize that place? You get a shudder as a response it's just visceral it looks like somebody grabbed him by the hair and shook him it's just looks like we're on the right track how how much about the mansion would have been told in the stories the prior at dinner the prior night <clears throat> i'm um, trying to figure out how much does allegra know that's fair yeah she wouldn't recognize the picture, yeah. but she would might recognize your guys' reaction. They pr Sid probably would have glossed over a lot of the really shitty parts and just mentioned that they found a mansion in, like, a villa in the hillsides that was safe. Yeah. Belonged to somebody rich, important, who has been long dead. Yeah, I, <laughs> Rich, important, and long dead. Given how uh, the reactions have been to Florence, I think you would have been very careful not to mention that it was full of automatons. Yeah. yeah, literally just, it was a safe haven for us to recuperate from what happened. Yeah. And then we moved on. Okay. So, yeah. And so Allegra is picking up on the discrepancy beyond, I mean, you were in the story and, you know, your body language at the time would have been consistent with the story. And this is discordant with that. Yeah. So Absolutely. Allegra has picked up that, okay, there's something else here. Yeah. Not to mention, if it was that nice and they were that happy, well, how how did that go from that to ran away and don't talk about it anymore? Right. So. I just realized that Sid's apron has the uh, the Florence Engineering Guild yep. thing on it. Yep. It would be all fancy and shit. Anybody who had been to Florence would recognize it. Yeah, but there's but, but as we mentioned Tony. in Florence, there's almost no travel. So especially into Florence, they literally had the guards that were supposed to be protecting Florence were keeping anybody from coming in. Mm -hmm. Right? It's all part of this one this all of Florence is one mad woman's dream for power. Right. We'll let that so sink in for a second. <laughs> It's more of the same, really. The whole thing. I, 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 I reduced the entire necrobiotic rule book to one bad woman. <laughs> She's a very bad girl. So, um. <laughs> you look like you need a minute to think. So, let's cut back because we still have a conversation to have with Felicity and Mom uh, before you guys show up to pick her up. So, Felicity! Hello. Hello. Um, you walk down and the, the reading room is on the right. The front door is right in front of you. What do you do? 
I just wanted to present I mean, you with your options because <laughs> you had said earlier, you know. Right. No. Yeah. Um, no, I go to see my mother. The they do that thing where you're they you know they know that you're there, but they don't close the book until they finish the page and then put the bookmark in and close the book and put it on the table. And only then do they come around to see you. Uh, and the eyebrow goes up as they see your your hair is down and your makeup is subtle but there's a smile and she's wearing a dress that's sort of out of the five that you had you picked like sort of the most elegant one hers is sort of number three on that there's a fair amount of flash on this dress but it's only all she's going to be doing is sitting in the reading room all day. So, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's got big elbows. Uh, but yeah, she looks at you and it's the, the hair and the makeup and scans you up and down. And she says, well, at least you chose a lovely dress, dear. What is it you'd like to read? Like there's no other options in the world. I'd like to talk, if that's all right with you. And she sits... A opposite her mother on the couch oh um all right then she kind of reaches over and puts her hand on the book and pushes it an extra half an inch away completely unnecessarily but she's not comfortable when her hand comes back to her lap yes let's um talk and she kind of looks around like she's looking for backup <laughs> how are you has your morning been good? Stressful, I think is the word I was looking for. The, the documents are all done, oh. by the way. It's official. Welcome to the family. Glad to hear that. I'm sorry that you found this morning difficult. Personally, I also found it quite interesting. Well, that's one way to look at it. Um, I'm a bit worried about how this is going to affect us. And it's the sort of the capital U, us, of the family. Mm -hmm. I don't see why it should affect us. A quick question, out of the blue. Feel free to say no. Um, would you consider... A Marrying a nice young man from the Medici family. She just Boa kind spits of... his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway across Italy. <laughs> I'm afraid my heart belongs to another. Oh, this has got nothing to do with love, dear. This is power. Love is power. I'm I'm sorry. Love is power. I guess if you could make him fall in love with you, you could get him to do things. So I think I understand what you're saying. Mom. Yes, dear. You love dad. Yes. And you loved him when you came here. Yes. From England. Yes. Of that she's sure. The, the now, not so much. He's been gone for a while. And you loved me. Yes, I did. And I'm sure I'll grow very fond of you again, dear, but you've just arrived. Mum. Yes. Is you love? That's the beginning of true power. I'm going to need a drink. And she rings her little bell. Do do go on. Um, you were talking about power. And you could see like the... <laughs> the, man, the grand manipulator is listening. 
It's like saying the word walk in front of a dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've offered her a Tree. new way to gain control, and she doesn't understand what you're talking about. When I lived, when I lived in Florence, I was raised to believe that achievement and power were all that mattered. Sounds like a lovely place, dear. Well, it was hell on earth. Oh, I've misunderstood. Achievement is nice. Power is okay. But are you happy? What has that got to do with anything, dear? Because why do you do anything if you're not happy? And she like, she realizes she's raising her voice a little bit and she comes back down. Uh-huh. You sound I so much like your father. Florence. Good. He sounds like a great man. Critical hit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you went through after I was gone. But it seems like you lost the only power that made you happy. And she's highly implying that it was her ability to love. Mm -hmm. The drink arrives. Small sherry. Uh, full, right to the brim. Fuck, fuck fashion. We're, we want a whole shot of this. This is this. When you ask for drinks at one in the afternoon in the reading room, you get a full glass. Uh, something's occurred, right? So, and she has a very unladylike large snort, about three quarters of it, and puts it down on the table. I. Sip. <laughs> <laughs> Sippy cup, yeah. But gold. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so when you drop it, you break your foot. Uh, but Felicity, you see in her face nothing. No emotional response at all. It's borderline sociopathic like there is there's a will except it's willful it's not that they can't feel the emotion they're willing themselves not to but that little tick is back that was there just before dinner last night and if you could mm -hmm. see ghosts you could see that that's actually her ghost the part of her that died when she lost you trying to get back in Basically, yeah. I, in, my, in my head, it was like pulling at the face, trying to pull it open to get back in, and that's what was yeah. causing the tick. But yeah, all you see is the physical tick. So I hope what I gave there was something like hope. Like she's stone cold killer, but it's by choice, mm -hmm. not by nature. I think... I think Delilah sees fuck Felicity sees <laughs> fall back on the safety name did you? No Delilah's job was way easier than this fuck this I'm Delilah again <laughs> well I think actually Felicity sees Felicity gets a glimpse of how Delilah used to think and how Delilah could have become Oh yeah, just, just and like that. Mm. she finishes the rest of her drink in the uncomfortable <laughs> silence, and you see her hand go back over unconsciously or not, and just rest on the book. What makes you happy? 
I almost said power, and if you'd asked me any day before yesterday, I would have said power. Now I'm not sure. That's the first step. And she reaches for the glass that's already empty and kind of seems surprised that it's empty. Reaches for the little bell, stops herself. And she puts her hand on the book again, and this time her eyes follow it as well. It's like a safety blanket. Um... Hi. Hold on a sec. While you think about that, I'm going to answer the chat uh, question. Uh, as uh, as you uh, as the camera sees the camera her fingers <laughs> drags across the cover, it's a very small book. It's only about that thick, bound in exquisite leather of a very finest quality, and burned into it with very carefully heated tools, is the title in Italian, of course. The Prince by Machiavelli. Mm -hmm. You called it Bison. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> There's only two books that sociopaths would read. <laughs> Hitler's German. Yeah, and and about yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and much harder to find in print. Hundred years dead. Yeah. So yeah, I'll give Felicity that too. As you look over at her hand and what she's looking at, she's reading Machiavelli's The Prince or How to Be um, a Prick. There's <laughs> actually some I really good like practical to... advice in there as long as you're willing to be a complete asshole. Yeah. I would like to go up and want wander. Mm -hmm. To the bookshelf. Yep. I'm looking for a very particular book. Okay. Um, do I find it? <laughs> you walk past. I'll tell you what you walk past, and then you tell me what you find. Because, uh, yes, uh, you walk past whole sections of uh, military strategy books. Not history, not this battle happened here, but like Clausewitz on war Sun Tzu's uh, on the art of war, all of these, this entire section, the vast majority of the books that are close to where she sits, the ones that look the most thumbed and the most read are all about taking power, controlling people, manipulation, you know, the, the seven things seven successful salesmen do, you know, those kind of books. Uh, it's all about manipulating people. As you walk past those, you get into a dustier, mustier section. And it's the great romances, the classics, the Shakespeare's complete collected works. But it's all covered in dust. Probably dad's section of the library. That's exactly what I was thinking. And uh, what were you looking for? Um, I take out a book. I um, pull out the handkerchief that was assigned me with this yes. outfit oh, yes. and I um, carefully dust off this this again probably like a leather bound second third edition something I feel like John was maybe partially a collector yep. um, and I go back to sitting across from my mother and I hand her the book it is Persuasion by Jane Austen and she looks at the title and you can see a complete failure to, to like they've never read it right they just see the title oh I've not read that one and they put theirs down like they think this is they're, they're opening this clearly thinking this is an instruction manual on how to persuade people <laughs> That's a little bit the intention. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she gonna cry. <laughs> it's 
It's one that I read more recently. And it's about a different kind of power than you're used to. But I would highly recommend paying attention. And she says this like gently but firmly. Mm -hmm. Mothering your mother? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, K Grabs. Kind of like, um, yeah, hi, K Grabs. Kind of like pulling a very gentle Allegra. Yep. Oh, yes. Yep. You're not going to know what I did to you until I'm too far away for you to do anything about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Until you're too far in to get out either. Yes. <laughs> Several hours later, you hear Catherine just bawling openly. <laughs> this isn't what I was expecting. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! I need another. The, all you hear is the bell just ringing as you. Ding, 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 ding. I need more Something sherry. Stronger, please. I need a lot more sherry. Uh, because suddenly she sounds <laughs> Something like the from the kitchen staff. If you please. Yeah, the cheap shit they cook with. Uh, it was made in a bathtub. I'll drink it. Uh, I worked for a chef uh, in the eighties who had access to some of the finest wines in the world. We worked in an incredible restaurant, and he preferred uh, red cooking wine which he drank to such levels that most nights he fell down and we had to send him home. Uh, the the 80s, yeah. The eighties was great. Uh, that was number three. I won't say the name of it, but it was the number three ranked restaurant in Alberta. It was good enough that we got to go to the um, uh, expo in Vancouver. And I got to spend uh, a whole summer cooking at expo, which was pretty cool. Too busy to go to anything, nice. but I was there. So <laughs> uh, anyway, Let's leave that behind. At that point, uh, Felicity, do you then leave your your Mothra uh, to uh, molt? Um. Whilst, whilst reading the Austin. Yeah, I think. I think she gets up deliberately, mm -hmm. um, and takes. You know, every movement is very deliberate, but elegant and graceful. Yeah. Like, she, she's like daring her mom to see things a different way yeah. or to like, to consider other possibilities and yeah. think back to how she used to be mm -hmm. um and um she stops at the door and looks back doesn't look at her mom but instead looks around at the room eyeing all of the books that have clearly gone unread for so long mm -hmm. looks kind of wistful and then closes the door behind her and heads outside is that where you were headed uh yeah she'll get some fresh air so you head down the stairs <laughs> and out the doors and at the same time um the, Terrence is <laughs> yeah terrible you see i'm gonna get you guys there because i want to show you all this magnificent scene at once before we close for the evening so you step out onto the top of the multi-layered like the layer of the wedding cake front steps you know, the, the half circle steps mm -hmm. with the pillars and the whole shit and it's all miraculously mm -hmm. clean because staff uh you step out over that and look out over the ornamental lawns and gardens and see that it is good. A little fancy and probably in a little much, but it, but good. You see and hear the uh, orchid mobile putter into the yard at the far end of the yard. In it, you see the happy crew, uh, Sid with sleeves. It's weird. Uh, but uh, you... All of you, as you come through these these entrances into this common space, just off to the side of the ornamental gardens in the sort of working part of the yard, it's like down at the city, just nobody looks. 
there doesn't need to be a wall because it's just not seen. It's just not done. But just on the other side, you guys don't have to follow those rules. Just on the other side of it, you see all of you, one of you for the first time, 12 people standing in tight formation in blue and gold liveries, standing in a traditional six and six pattern. And between them, there is a flurry. It looks like a ball of rats, but it's actually workmen. And they're building a palanquin. That's not what Allegra had in mind. Terence is standing, they're giving directions and... <laughs> I would like a quick response from each of you to what you see, and then we're going to give you a week to think about how you're going to fix poor Terrence and these poor people that only know how to do one thing. Sid full on bridge to the, or no fingers to the bridge. <laughs> yeah, just... yeah like it's going like this. You hear the soft piff, piff, uh, piff of three face palms. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, <laughs> Felicity, with this is, the yeah. most like professional disdain that Sid can muster to the uh, point that Stefano almost like recoils. He mm -hmm. goes apprentices. Felicity <laughs> 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 steps it's out. Like dealing with um, apprentices. Looks to oh. left to right and just goes oh boy. <laughs> and Allegra's <laughs> voice and rings out. What do you think you're doing? And we will end on the scene of uh, Terrence throwing everything that he's holding in every just bah! and just everything flies in all directions. And he's got his back to you. And you just watch his head retract like a turtle. And he's just try. He knows the voice, and he's. But just she's looking at the others. She's looking at the Lemites and said, "What did I instruct you to do?" Work, madam, says the leader. And I instructed you to take instructions from Terrence. And Terrence is, you hear, oh shit. There's oh, shit. no oh, way in oh, hell shit. he would have instructed oh, you to do that. But I kind of did. You said I fed them and I got them a place to stay and I asked them what they did and they said they carried a palanquin so I thought we don't have a palanquin and now we do. Oh, well, that's all right, then. And the head comes back. God. Up. And it was clenched teeth. <laughs> yeah. And that is where we will we'll save this fight for next week, because that is where we will drop the curtain on tonight. Oh, I love this. Everybody in this city misunderstands what's going, what you're trying to ask them to do. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just the... Uh... Sure. Stuff flying in the air, yeah. freeze frame, black and white JoJo outro. He's totally enough for the turtle do, club, and I remember do. I just had a flash memory of the worst movie ever. Uh, Dana Carvey as Mr. Turtle. Oh, it's just God. him going turtle, turtle, turtle for like Master 90 minutes. Disguise. Yeah, Master, yeah. Ma oh, yeah. Master of Disguise. Yeah. yeah, it's literally just a bunch of really bad SNL sketches all It's the based. stuff that they, uh, as far, I mean, this is It is my theory. one of my favorite horrible movies. Is it? Oh, I can't even watch it as a bad movie, and I like bad movies, but that one drives me nuts. <laughs> uh, but I, I, every time I watch it, it's like, they didn't let you use those on SNL for a fucking reason, Dana. They're not funny. <laughs> just just like Honestly, massive head wound Harry it's... wasn't funny until the dog started to eat the head then it was funny but that wasn't scripted so... <laughs> Honestly the the thing that I love that movie for is basically just am I not turtly enough for the turtle club <laughs> <laughs> Yes yeah That's why I, saw, I I got it when I saw your quote but we're still alive I should do the thing I should pretend that we're <laughs> doing things here so, before we um, get to the after chat the, the curtain dropped and the people behind the curtain just kind of chatted with their mics on for a minute. And then the producer went, <laughs> and so we shut up and went back to the show. Oh, the thank yous. Let's do the thank yous. Let's pretend we know what we're doing. The thank yous. But, no see, we are inclusive and we are including folks in this is who, what we are actually like as real people. This is what we're like when, when, this, when we've forgotten that people are watching. Just as bad on screen as we are. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
And Look. if you want to chat with us, come chat with us in Discord. Link in the dis- in the you should. chat. The, the link is right Nicely there. Done. Absolutely. Well segued. Uh, but that brings it back to me and and some some vestige of self control as I thank these amazing people. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, the wayward night tonight uh, because once again uh, I keep throwing you uh, into this hard to do family RP with this really unlikable mother uh, that you have put one crack in the dam but that that's it right this this battle is nowhere near over because she still thinks it's a battle uh, but thank you for playing that character that's hard to do I appreciate it the other ones the other people is also equally impressive allegra uh Karis, watching allegra get upset just at the end of tonight in particular but just at this whole place it's so rare it's usually like okay i don't like what's going on here i'm just gonna fix it but here it's like these fucking people <laughs> so, yeah. somebody's finally it's the first out, time she's lost it yeah somebody finally figured out how to push allegra's buttons that uh-huh. somebody was me uh, so, <laughs> yeah, and you've so, been trying hard for weeks oh it's so hard to, <laughs> i get it it's it's like trying to piss off uh i've almost said gandhi but apparently he was very easy to aggravate it's like trying to piss off the dalai lama right it's just mm-hmm. you're just you're throwing rocks at something and they're just going right through right but it is wonderful to see. Uh, I I have a, an appreciation of Allegra as a human being now that I didn't before because, yeah, she she finally got mad at somebody. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and and oh boy, is it going to be fun watching her and grovel and try and fix it? Because... <laughs> yeah. So I'm you know I'm I'm trying not to take it personally that the reason why she's. <laughs> <laughs> spending an afternoon with Sid. Oh, speaking of Sid, uh, buys an underscore stone fist. Uh, it is so much fun watching Sid resist. Right, I have I have a check marks down here uh, that uh, my goal for tonight uh, for was to try and seduce each of the characters by their fate. Fel- Felicity. Felicity walked onto the sword all the way to the hilt before going, wait a minute, and backing off. So that was really cool. I was, I, I was, I appreciated that a lot. It's like, well, hey. she did all the way up to the hilt, and then she took the hilt yeah, to and turn it said, around. No, I'm not doing this, and then backed off. So I love that. Uh, Allegra just kind of failed to see the options, right? Because it's just no, just make people happy. This is easy. I don't understand why there's all this fuss and bother. Uh, and Sid is just. I, I can just hear it in his head because it's got to be a terrible thought because Sid, of all people, is going, I need to start a revolution. Like Sid, the most conservative guy that has <laughs> ever trod the planet needs to start a revolution. So I'm looking forward to all of Trying that. his very hardest not to end up like Hoffa. Yep. Yep. <laughs> a lump in an end zone. Um, <laughs> that's my favorite one as they buried him in a football pitch, uh, football field <laughs> in the end zone. Uh, so Mythbusters busted that. <laughs> I know, but it's still my favorite. He's thing. not dead. He just went home. Yeah. They told him if you don't bugger off, you're I gonna mean, die. And he went, okay, I'm leaving. Even if, even if they didn't kill him, he'd be dead by now. Oh yes, yes. Or possibly buried in the football field. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> anyway, we're still live. I have to get out of here before I say something ridiculous. <laughs> There are some more things I have to say. Thank you to, to chat. Uh, it was mostly us tonight, to be fair, but uh, the, all the people watching watching on VOD, thank you. There are a lot of you. We get a lot of views on VOD on this show. And all of you on YouTube, we get tons of views there as well. So people are We're enjoying... almost a radio drama here. Yeah, people want, like watching this level of role play. It's hard to do. It's professional acting. It's improv Nobody knows what's going on, including me. And okay, the last two things are true. <laughs> nobody knows what's going on, and, and including me. And it's improv. Those two things are for absolutely true. Uh, but <laughs> with that, thank you all to all of those people. If you watched all the way to here on YouTube, please hit the buttons down below and pop a comment in there. The algorithm likes the comments. It eats them up like tasty little popcorns. And nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Uh, I don't care about the algorithm. I like the comments. They're nice, too. And also, just so you know, we do look. And how can I prove that I look? Because somebody didn't do five spinny hearts this week. They did clappy hands and four spinny hearts. And I noticed. (laughs) 
<laughs> just in case. Uh, just in case you think I'm lying, I do. I and we every love single them. One of them. Every single one of them makes me smile, and yet you're sitting right there. And just... I miss playing with you, too. Yes, that as well. But with that and everything And thank else... you, Kevin. Oh, thank you. This game yes. is fun. Uh, this game is fun because my job here is to make people sweat. Uh, and, and like I <laughs> and always we say, love that. Oh. Dan dancing blindfolded on, on a razor blade. It's my favorite hobby, and you guys push me to the edge with it, and I love you for it. So thank you for thanking me, and you're welcome. There, that's the correct answer. You're welcome. I keep telling people to learn how to take a compliment. Then I go on for 37 freaking seconds before I learn to say you're welcome to a thank you. So, <laughs> oof, the project never ends. Speaking of projects that never end, I have one right here. Oh, what a segue. A project that I wish would never end for everybody. Please be nice to each other. Good night. Bye. We'll